And let's dive straight into one experience that is described in many contexts as more of a, a trait or persistent experience than just a one-off, although I think it, it can have elements of both, which is enlightenment. And you've written a lot, obviously, about this. So could you talk to us a little bit about what enlightenment is um, and how you think about it and then what some of the underlying neurobiology of enlightenment is? Sure, well, you know, to sort of pick up from the last conversation, we, the last line of discussion we just had, you know, even the concept of enlightenment is fascinating because by using one word, enlightenment, people can mean lots of different things. And, and we wrote a book called How Enlightenment Changes Your Brain. And we started with kind of the classic experience of enlightenment, people talking about the Buddhist enlightenment and the Buddha having that enlightenment experience. But then if you follow the kind of the history of enlightenment, you get to the age of enlightenment in which enlightenment goes completely away from spirituality and completely towards rationality and science. You know, the whole idea of enlightenment was to get away from spirituality. And yet, so ultimately, you know, when we start to think about what enlightenment is on a very broad perspective, it's really about kind of a sudden experience that someone has that radically changes their perceptions of the world. Now, one of the things that we also do in our book is we differentiate a little bit between what we refer to as the big E and the little E experiences. And we do that for a couple of reasons, but the little E experiences are these sort of little aha moments that can happen throughout a person's life. Most people have had at least a few of them. And that's part of why I think they're helpful because people can, you know, that, that's a taste of that bigger thing. It's, it's when you're dealing with some problem, you're struggling with some issue, and then suddenly, you know, that light bulb goes off and you have a new way of thinking about it. But usually we call them little E experiences because they kind of are restricted to a specific concept or domain or part of your life. They don't change everything about you. They just change this one part or they just, you know, you, you suddenly get something that you hadn't gotten before. But when you have the big E experiences, this is where you are having this completely radical shift in virtually every way in which you look at the world. So, you know, the evidence points to the fact that these experiences change people's, you know, the way they look at their life, the way they look at meaning and purpose in life, their fear of death, the way they look at their job, their relationships, their health, and their spirituality. So all of these things radically change in what arguably can be, you know, moments. And what's fascinating is, of course, is, you know, when and where these experiences occur, which, you know, based on the data that we have of about 2,000 experiences, can kind of be anywhere. I mean, you know, there's obviously the classic where people, you know, monks and so forth who have spent 30 years meditating and then suddenly they reach an enlightened state. But some of our favorite examples were just, you know, people walking down the street or driving their car and then suddenly they just like saw the universe in a completely different way. And so there are lots of different ways that these experiences can happen for people, sometimes in a very religious or spiritual context, sometimes not. But, you know, ultimately what we're seeing is a common core component, which are, and which we kind of divided into several different things based on these narratives. We actually ran a um, survey of people's experiences. We got about 2,000 people describing them and people describe several core components of the enlightenment experience. And we've talked about some of them already. The feeling of kind of, you know, surrendering, being taken over seems to be very fundamental to a lot of these experiences. The sense of oneness, being connected to the universe, God, you know, whatever that particular person experiences. It's also associated with a profound sense of intensity. That's something that characterizes these experiences as, you know, profoundly different for people. It's the most, you know, it's the most intense feeling of love, the most intense feeling of energy, the most intense feeling of oneness, whatever it is, it's kind of the most of whatever experience that this person has ever had. And it also leads to this very profound sense of clarity that they kind of understand the world in a way that they never have before. And so for them, you know, it really, it does change the way they think about things. And it signifies this new way, a clearer way of looking at the world around them. And then the final aspect of the big enlightenment experiences is that while enlightenment is kind of a momentary experience of enlightenment, you can also be in enlightenment, meaning that you kind of persist in that state pretty much you know, in perpetuity. And that is, again, part of what we have found is that people feel that it radically changes how they are, not just in the moment, but really, you know, for a lifetime. And so, you know, looking at all of that, then we can get a better understanding of what these experiences are like, and then start asking questions. Okay, if they feel this, this, and this, what's going on in the brain 
when those experiences actually happen. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple, Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.